What's up, guys? I'm Shannon Aikow, Counts Customs. Check out Bill's Cool Projects on a YouTube. Take it easy. Hey, welcome, YouTubers, to my channel, Bill's Cool Projects. Uh, back in the shop today, and today's project, uh, I'm going to build a bike rack for the back of my pickup truck and uh, to fit uh, my two Saunders 20-inch, 4-inch fat tire bikes. So, so anyway, um, thanks for watching. Uh, please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, get updates on when I'm posting. I try to get out a YouTube every week now. But uh, anyway, let's take a look at uh, what I've got here to work with. All right, so here's the two fat tire bikes. Uh, watch my other YouTubes. I got hot rod build solar projects, and uh, I did an assembly and a review video of the Saunders Bolt X. And there are a lot of uh, fat tire bikes out there. Uh, the 20 inches uh, diameter, if you haven't ridden one, they're unbelievable the performance and the torque you can get out of a 20 inch. Kind of looks like a kid's bike, but it's not. So. So anyway, um, I looked on eBay and Amazon and all over trying to find a bike rack um, that I could put up in the back bed of my pickup truck that has a cap on it. Couldn't find anything, came across a couple videos, guys making uh, bike racks out of PVC pipe and thought I'd give a go with this uh, and make a rack of my own out of some, some uh, PVC pipe. So the back of my truck, this is a Ford F350 four-wheel drive deal, um, and I've got the cap on it. Uh, you see the solar panel. Look at my other video where I put a solar panel on the back, which contributes power to the RV and will charge any tow vehicles. But I've got the bed in the back. I've got a cap on here. And the neat thing about the fold bikes, if I don't fold them uh, in the middle to throw them in the trunk of the car, or like I used to do in the back of the truck, um, I can take undo this lever right here and tilt down the handlebars I can lower the seat quick enough and then my plan is I have enough clearance uh, just to roll the bike up into the back of the bed so what I want to do is make like a carrier that bolts you see I have eye bolts up there for tie in and cargo down so I want to make a PVC rack uh, basically a rectangle on the bottom rectangle on top and make a cradle for the front tire. So I get up in here, just roll it up, put the tire down in a cradle, and uh, we're good to go. So one bike will be on the left, and I'll put the other bike on the right. And so anyway, that's it. And I don't want to be using tie-down straps. I've seen some where everybody, you know, they're using ratchet straps and all this gingerbread to try to get the bike held solid. I want to be able to just pull the bike up, lift the front tire into the rack, and forget about it and go. Um, and then I have a uh, two by six ramp. Um, there are aluminum ones out there, lightweight, but um, I have the ramp for the truck that I use for other. I have another one of these two for rolling tractors and stuff up, but uh, so this should work fine. So so I went down the neighborhood Home Depot and I decided I've seen some bike racks being built with inch diameter PVC pipe. I think I wanted a little bit something heavier so I went a little bit extra cost, and this stuff's cheap compared to what you get. Uh, that's inch and a quarter PVC. And I got a box of fittings. I've got the uh, T fittings and elbows, and uh, I got some glue. So what's neat about the PVC is I can put this all together, dry fit everything, try it. Uh, and then uh, if everything's going to work okay, I'll just mark it with a Sharpie and then um, glue everything together and it'll be permanent. And then my goal is too, so the rack uh, will go up over top of those eye bolts. Um, and then if I want to secure that rack even more, I could put like, a, you know, one of those hose clamps or something around it to hold it in. So, and then if I don't want it in there, it'd be easy to lift out, take out and store in the garage uh, when I'm not using it. So. Anyway, uh, let's get started, and I'll try to give some dimensions on what works and uh, see how it goes. 
So I thought I'd just go over how this PVC stuff goes together. Uh, if you're experienced in this stuff, this is going to be boring for you, I already know it. But um, if you're a younger viewer, which tends to happen on YouTube, um, never seen how this is done. This is just standard PVC pipe. But again, this is inch and a quarter, heavy wall for the rack that I made. Um, it comes in half inch, three quarter, I mean, all different sizes. So if you have any projects you want to build, uh, if you want some shelves, you can make shelves, you can make the rack like I did. Um, and then also the plumbing in your house, it's the same, same stuff. So this is the white PVC polyvinyl chloride. Um, they also have the black stuff you see at Home Depot, that's ABS. And ABS does require a different type of glue um, to hold it together. But typically what you're going to do is have the uh, primer, which is this purple stuff, which really stains your hands real good. And then the, uh, the clear PVC cement, they also have a gray version of this. But if you're doing ABS, the black stuff, which is a little bit weaker too, if you're doing a project out of the black, I like using the white PVC and then painted black with plastic paint from Rust-Oleum. Because the black, the ABS is a little bit more brittle and it doesn't have the flex. And I think it's just a different application. You might use that. So, so anyway, you got your fittings. Um, and uh, you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or one of your hardware stores, Ace or whatever, there's like a smorgasbord of all kinds of different fittings and caps and T-sections and uh, different things you could do and stick all this stuff together. Um, I have a friend up in uh, Troy, Montana that was on a lake and had a pontoon boat. And he basically took and made all the railings uh, all the way around the boat uh, with the white PVC. And then afterwards, he took some real small, you know, lightweight sandpaper and took all the writing and the stamping off of it. And basically, stuff will last forever. So, uh, whole railing system made out of PVC pipe. So, uh, anyway, so what you do is you get your fitting, make sure it's just a little bit clean, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you get your primer. And what you're going to do is put a little coat around there. Doesn't have to be that perfect. So do all the inside of your fittings, and then I like going around the outside of the fitting like that. And then put a coat on either end while you're at it. If you know this is gonna be attached to something, just do it while you have it out. And then after that, um, just take the PVC glue, and then it's got these little spongy things on there, and so you're just gonna not push too hard, but get a good coating on there. Um, usually people will say that's enough, but I like going on the inside of the fitting too. Uh, like that and then when you're ready to go you have to do this pretty quick uh, don't dilly dally around squeeze it in and then turn it a little bit and then hold it in for a second or two because what I've noticed if you don't hold it in it'll it'll just pop out a little bit okay um, so once that's in there there's absolutely no way you're getting that joint apart uh, even if you take a hacksaw to it it's just like solid solid glue joint okay so the next thing as you're fabbing up let me get another strap here as you're fabbing up that's what's really nice you saw that me do that in the earlier part of the video um just test fit all your fittings and then note too that when you put the glue on this pipe is going to go in just a little bit further maybe an eighth of an inch something like that but anyway fab everything up and i like tapping everything with a hammer uh, just a rubber hammer, whatever you got laying around, or steel hammer, just tap it easy and then get it so it fits on good. But when you do that, man, it's going to be hard to get that off. So what I like doing is take a pair of channel locks and grip onto it if it's too tight and you can't get it apart before you glue it, and just start spinning it like this. And then work way out, um, and then you're good to go. So Anyway, um, cutting it. Um, I use my chop saw there on the floor, any chop saw. This stuff is easy to cut. Um, you could use a wood saw, a hack saw, anything like that. It comes in 10 foot lengths, very cheap, I think, for what you're getting, probably the cheapest thing in Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, you get a 10 foot stick of this. This was inch and a quarter, and it was like $4.50. And I only used maybe three sticks of it to build my rack in the back of the truck. And, uh, 
you know, and again, it's 10 foot lengths. Um, they do have some shorter pieces if you need some plumbing fixes and stuff on your sprinkler system or whatever in the yard or whatever you'll see an assortment of that, but it's cheaper by a whole stick, 10 feet. And then um, they usually have a saw handy at Home Depot. So if you have a car, you can't carry a 10 foot stick of this home. Um, take the saw, whack it in half, and then you have two five foot pieces. Take it to the register and just tell them you whack one in half and they'll just charge you the $4.50 or whatever the cost is. So again, cut it with a chop saw, hack saw, a wood saw. And if you want to spend some money, if you're doing a lot of joints, um, I got this at Home Depot. This is a Lennox cutter. And I use the snot out of this, uh, mostly for my electrical solar projects when I'm cutting copper wire, like one aught uh, wire for linking my lithium batteries together and crimping ends on stuff. So this is great for cutting copper wire. You don't want to cut anything steel. I would probably kill the edge. But how that works is just get it where you're going to mark it. And it has like a ratchet. You see it's biting into it. And just work your way down. And this is a little bit at its limit, inch and a quarter. That's why I kind of use a chop saw. But the lighter weight stuff, three quarters, five eighths and stuff, works great on it. You just work your way down. And there you go. Nice, super clean cut. And uh, no rough edges or anything. Also, when you cut on a chop saw or regular saw, if you get a little fringe around the outside edge, just take your fingers and just take your fingernail and wipe it around the edge and that uh, little fuzz or whatever it is will come right off. So anyway, hopefully this section was helpful and uh, let's go on to the next part. Is that I wanna make this a horizontal cradle. So this is about 22 and three quarter inches is what I needed. So, so this is kind of what it's gonna look like. And this is one of the side supports. And then I'll just uh, duplicate this uh, for the other side of the tire and then uh, times two bikes. So uh, I need uh, four of these made up. All right, so I got the end pieces cut. I cut four cross members here. One, two, three, four. I have my end cap. I have my T's and the tire's gonna go in between. At least that's the idea. So I need to do a measurement on how, what tire thickness I need, what spacing I need in between here and now. So I'll do that next. All right, let's see how this fits. Frame there, let's roll the bike up on it, make sure the tire clears. All right, nice fit. And the idea is that this is going to be flat. I mean, I didn't take into account my disc brake. Doggone. So, I had to shorten this up an inch and a quarter, and you see right on the side here, my disc brake was in the way, so shorten that up, and I brought it just, just right where I need it, so I shortened it up an inch and a quarter. So when you do this, I would imagine it's just going to be uh, a little bit of trail and error to build one of these on what exactly you need, especially all the truck beds are different and stuff. So, but anyway, just kind of give you the idea on how this is put together. All right, so now I've got my T's on here and that was about an inch and three quarter inch PVC sleeve that I needed. So this is a nice tight fit here. And so it's going to be kind of up off the bottom frame about that far. So, so now I need a dimension from here down to the lower T fitting. Oh, frame's coming together. So now I got to figure out uh, the bottom distance uh, for the gap. 
and the two front legs right here because my top's wider than my base to fit my wheel well. I'm going to angle these in so I'll get a dimension on that next. This is kind of what I'm shooting for here. I've got to refine it a little bit, but uh, it's getting close. And uh, front tires just slide right in there. I don't even think I'll have to do any straps or anything to hold it. So, but uh, we'll see. But uh, anyway, I think I need a couple more T fittings. Doing a test fit. Fits perfect, man. The eye bolts ready to lock it in on the bottom with like a hose strap. And I'm coming around the wheel well real nice. And I think it's getting really close here to uh, gluing this thing up, which is going to be a fun time with all these joints. So anyway, I need to get a couple uh, more elbows to join the bottom section together on either side. Glue it up and I think that's going to wrap it up. Thing is strong now and I don't even have it glued so there you go put the tires right in between there on the end on both sides I have a little jog for my wheel well right in there go around the wheel well already test fitted it up in there so I think I'm gonna test fit it and then uh, put the bikes in Man, this is looking really good. I'm surprised. But uh, I'm glad I went with the inch and a quarter PVC instead of the uh, inch. Made it a lot stronger. So I think the next step is uh, it's kind of nice having a center area too for storage or water jugs or whatever. I don't have to think about that. Maybe do some dimple dye panels or something in there, pimp it out a bit. So. Anyway, I'm going to try it up in the truck, and then after that, it's time to glue it up. So I made this ramp out of a 2x8 scrap that I had laying around, and I was able to find this metal bracket. And I'll try to go on eBay or Amazon, one of those, and see if I can find this for you and put a link in the description. But all it is is a bent piece of metal, and just bolt it through with a couple carriage bolts through onto the uh, two by eight and yeah, warning sticker and all that stuff on it. But it makes a nice flat area too, instead of having a two by four laying when you're rolling the tractor up and getting up over the edge, um, this allows it to lay down flat. And I guess if you wanted to put a pin or something, it does have a hole here that you can pin this on, but the uh, thing works great. And I just got two of those made up uh, two, two, two by eights, and then uh, I got myself a really nice sturdy ramp. All right, let's give this a shot. So I tilted my uh, handlebars over. I got my seat down, kick stand up, take it up the ramp. And hopefully I'm gonna clear. Oh yeah, look at that. I'll put my kickstand down and leave it sit here. And it is in. All right. Stand up. And I can even kick this over a little further. Look at that. That is the way to do it. Very nice. Very nice. I'm liking that. And I think what I'm going to do is... Man, that is working good. Is that... I have these quarter 20 bolts holding the cap down. I think I'm going to make a little eyelet. And maybe I'll just use a bungee cord to hold the bike up against the side of the... The cab there and I think that is going to be extremely strong man that bike is not going to go anywhere with that in there then I have that whole center section too for storage of some sort probably put a cooler up in there or whatever I'll have to see what my dimensions are but man I'm liking that 
Here comes the second one in, coming from landing seat down. Handlebars tilted over. And come in for a landing. Just left the kickstand up this time. Ha <laughs> ha! Check that out. Oh man, I love it when one of my crazy ideas comes together. That is in there and solid. All right, look how much room I have up in the middle. Because before I fold them and we laid down a moving blanket and uh, it'd take up that whole floor, but now I have all this center space available now. So I'll get a couple, maybe I'll fabricate a little, just an old bracket or something like that. And just uh, tie it on to uh, one of those bolts I have holding the cap up, but man, I'm liking that. Check that out. So ran down to Home Depot and replaced my uh, just regular bolts with an eye bolt and got a 24 inch bungee cord. Ties right into the rack. And I'll tell you what, man, this, this is solid. This is not going anywhere. And what's nice, I could reach the bag. We could load up everything in the bag before we even going anywhere. And I picked up this tote storage container. And the dimensions, I think it should work. So let's see if it fits. Ah, check that out, fits perfect. So this rack I made should work with any 20 inch fat tire folding bike of sorts, I would imagine. Um, just so happens I have the Saunders here and uh, there's other models, other manufacturers that tilt the, uh, the handlebars over too, but uh, that's what it looks like with the seats down and the uh, handlebars tipped over. Black, man, this thing uh, turned out pretty cool for a pretty quick project here. Um, this is the paint that I use. It's the Rust-Oleum 2X, and it's good for plastic and wood and metal, anything you wanna spray it on. Once this goes on, it, it's extremely hard, even on plastic, so I use it on dashboards, lawn furniture. I mean, anything plastic, uh, it really, I don't know how they do it. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna let this bake out in the sun for maybe an hour or two, and then it's time to put it back in the truck and uh, finish up the, the video here and end the project. All right, so that wraps up the video. As you can see, man, it worked out really well. I'm glad I did this. I have the complete floor of the truck open now to put other stuff, grill, rugs, for the RV, everything I want right in the middle there before we used to throw the bikes up in there. But uh, anyway, uh, no ratchet straps involved. I hate ratchet straps tying the bicycles down, coming loose. I uh, just have a little bungee cord there, which I really don't even need. There's nothing on the front. Uh, that tire is just down in that cradle, uh, that rectangular cradle. Um, I have a solar panel up on top of the truck. Look at my other video where I put the uh, solar on the pickup truck cap. And that's, uh, I think it's 350 watts. And then I have a charge controller from Victron Energy in the corner back there. Just converting it down to uh, the 12 volts. And then I have an inverter back here so I can plug the bicycle chargers into the, uh, into the inverter and charge the bikes while going down the road or sitting still, whatever. Um, or I could just plug them into the RV power, which I have another video on, on doing the RV. So, and it's easy with the ramp, just roll them up in here. I'm not lifting because these things, like I mentioned earlier, are 55, 60 pounds. These are the Saunders and then the Fold X. Uh, also on my channel, I have assembly of the white one I just did. Um, and that's all detailed. Uh, if you're interested in uh, getting an e-bike, uh, you can't beat them. So uh, with that, Let's go ahead and wrap it up. We're gonna be uh, out uh, with the RV all next week up in uh, Redstone, Carbondale, Marble, Glenwood Springs, and then we're gonna be uh, riding the bikes around Aspen. So maybe I'll shoot some footage up there next week in Aspen with the two bikes. But uh, 
anyway, thanks for subscribing. Please subscribe. Hit the uh, ring the bell for uh, any new alerts uh, on new uh, videos I'm posting. I'm trying to get out one a week, and um, that's about it for now. Thanks for watching.